this here is the most important part because like i said before what happened what policies were passed in that time but i know you said it's the end of the world but realistically government will push things through like for instance yeah they'll give more funding to say for instance i don't know church of england than a Sikh temple because Mm. they will feel that church of england is going to be more in favor of their ruling than a Sikh temple would be so that basically starts conflict between the two people because of the fact that you know why is their favoritism why isn't they not there we go there Live. We go. now we're recording yes yes yeah Hello people, big up yourselves all the time, every time. Welcome back to another episode of Out The Box with myself, Jago. And today, as always, I have my guys, Juan. What's good, guys? I'm back fresh from England. Shout out to the panel. We're here again with another episode to bring to you SGMG News. How are we all doing today? Jeez. And like B-Dot, you know what time it is. We're here to have some talks. Let's do this. Yeah, boy. Lovely jubbly. So, um, on to the next episode of the Freedom Series. Yep. And we're going to be looking at freedom of thought, belief and religion. So, this is one that kind of goes under the radar unless you are involved quite heavily with one of the practices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of um, information for everyone in this, realistically, that would benefit them from not, from knowing in it. I believe it does break it down quite nicely for people. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, and and just just to clarify, as always, people do your due diligence, mate. You can go and you can go and look yeah, at this yourself research, whenever you want to. It's right there for people to go and look at. So the first article is from the Equality and Human Rights Commission website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's for the UK in that. Um, So article nine basically looks at your freedom to thought, belief and religion, which basically includes the right to change your religion or belief at any time. Now, the first thing we look at is these are three separate entities of words, which means they are three different concepts. So freedom of religion, everyone kind of knows as general. But yeah. people might not know about freedom of thought or freedom of belief. Belief, yeah, that's true. And belief can come under a lot of type of beliefs. Um, same as thought, really. Same as thought. Yeah, you, can, you can think something without acting upon it and you can believe something without acting on something whereas religion is something is like how, is how you live your life but not only that you think about it like this as well you can also you can also believe in something and have thoughts from that you know what i mean or through a thought you can become you can be, have a belief in something you see what i'm saying yeah so so this um freedom mm. protects a wide range of non-religious beliefs including atheism, agnosticism, mm-hmm. veganism mm-hmm. relating to food and pacifism relating to anti-war, uh, anti-violence. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in this, it basically <coughs> states, yeah, if you have a belief of something, you're protected. Yeah, mm-hmm. for, that belief is protected basically throughout the whole life unless you are going to cause public safety, public mm. order, yeah. um, uh, uh, protect against other people's health and morals and the rights yeah. and freedoms of other people. So based on them things there. So basically, as long as what you believe in isn't harmful or hurtful or demoralizing or, you know, risks anyone's health or impedes upon anybody's rights or beliefs, then it's okay. From yes. what I'm getting, that's what. So, I'll, 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 so with everything that's going on now and everything that's been going on, 
do yeah. you see this being diminished in any sort of way? Okay, so what I was going to say is when these freedoms were drawn up, mm -hmm. it was a very different plan. And, yeah. you know, it was very easy or a lot more easier to see the black and whites between this and obviously the people doing the damn thing. Mm -hmm. I think we've come to a time now, like we've looked at other freedoms, yeah, and all the freedom so far has stated, as long as you don't cause problems to other people. And we live in a society where anything now can cause a problem to another person. So you even cause harm. Harm. So in that, like realistically, are these freedoms do they stand? What is the point? Because if it says, oh, I can practice belief, but if it causes um, health or morals or infringes on the rights of other people, say, for instance, I practice my faith as a, as a Catholic and then my next door neighbour is anti-religion and they don't like me getting up early in the morning and going to church and, you know, doing certain religious things, is that then they can, you know, inform the police and the law can say, well, you can't be doing them things anymore. So off the back of that, do you then think that this needs to be revisited and maybe needs to be amended and changed? Because as you said, if this was stated and put in place all of them years ago and now, obviously, as you said, with a situation like that, do you then think this rule needs to be maybe amended in some sort of way? Because as you said, you could be, you know, not causing any sort of harm or problem or whatever and be religious and live next door to someone who's completely not religious in any sort of way and it causes friction and tension between two sorts of people, but there's not any sort of real essential problem there it's just two different ways of life conflicted so do you think that this needs to be amended in some sort of way yes i i do think that maybe they should revisit it maybe take a look at it and maybe have a sit down and obviously try and amend something like that because i do believe as much as they i can see what you're saying jay as yeah what's the point but i do believe if this weren't here if this article that we're looking at weren't around yeah, I reckon it'd be a lot worse. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I believe it does something, at least something. So it can be, if it can be revisited and amended, so it can do even more of something. Yeah. Then why not do that? Because if it wasn't here, I reckon it'd be peak, bro. So um, the article itself it states this: freedom of thought, consciousness, and religion. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, consciousness, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief. I don't know why they put his. So that's quite. Uh, yeah, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't put a gender on and something. Gender, that's just yeah. not wrong to even. And that's very. And hold on, that's very wrong for them to. to yeah. 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 That should shouldn't have a he there. Not really happy. Change, he, change their religion, belief, or freedom and freedom, either alone or in the community with others, and in public or private to manifest. Um, their religion or belief in worship, teaching, practice and observance. And the mm. second one is freedom to manifest one's religion or belief shall be subject only to such limitations as are prescribed by law and are necessary in a demo de democratic society in the interest of public safety, for the protection of the public order, health or morals, or for the protection of the rights or freedom of others. So that's mm -hmm. the two main points that this um, act allows, protects, should I say. Okay. Um, yeah, so going on to um, the next article. Um, this was like a case study, wasn't it, B Yeah, by the Equal Rights Trust. Yes, well, yes. Do you want to um, run us through it or? So if if you want, I'll I'll read this main paragraph and then we can we can have yeah, a, we can have a quick chat about that. Okay. <laughs> so obviously this is something that happened way back in 2013. So on the 15th of January 2013, the European Court of Human Rights issued its long-awaited judgment in the Oida and others versus UK, in which it ruled on the joint cases of four Christians who claimed that the UK had violated their rights under Article 9, the freedom of religion and or Article 14, prohibition of discrimination, 
um, of the European Convention of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms in, in all, bar one of the cases, which involved employees who had either been disciplined or dismissed as a result of their refusal to carry out a part of their job, which they felt would be contrary to the Christian faith. The court found that the UK had not violated the individual's rights. Oh. So the case study at hand was that this uh, female worked on British Airways mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. The uniform policy uh, disallowed wearing a cross. I don't know whether yes. it was wearing any jewellery or whether it was just wearing anything that was religiously uh, in thing. Um, mm -hmm. And she suspended, suspended her without pay. Yeah. Yes. Um, as a refusal not to remove the cross. Obviously, they took it to court. You would think if someone like, obviously, I know they haven't stated how long she worked for the company, but you would think if someone was working for a company for X amount of time, even if you did dismiss them, you would at least dismiss them with pay. No, well, if you're going to suspend them, yes, if you're going to dismiss them, you're not going to dismiss them with pay. You're not going to do that. You're just going to, you're, you're just going to sack them. You know what I mean? Like, simple as that. You're dismissed. We don't have to pay you no more. You don't work for us no more. But, but if you're going to suspend them, and the thing about it is, if you're if you're basing it off off certain policies, from the policy I know anyway for, that I that I've been through once before, like if you turn up to your initial meeting, your first initial disciplinary meeting, and you do get suspended, you get suspended on full pay. Right. Because they would, she, I'm sure she would have had to have gone through a disciplinary meeting to get suspended or dismissed. Yeah, yeah of course. So that seems a bit alien to me why she wouldn't have been paid at all. And a little bit, a little bit. Well, it seems very underhand to be fair, but you know, um, to dismiss someone over the fact that they're wearing a crop, like, I don't see that to be offensive, but I'm speaking from my own perspective because I'm not offended by, you know, a religious symbol, but I don't see how that would impede any sort of harm or cause any sort of duress or, or issue to anybody else. It's not like mm. she's going up to every single person on the flight and saying, oh, by the way, I'm a Christian. Mm. So here's the thing. I, I do I do find it a little bit of a double edged sword. Because if I was in that position, yeah, like I, I know what my belief is. I, I know what religion I believe in. You know what I mean? Like I, I'll just tuck it in. Yeah. Like that, this is me anyway. I'll just tuck it in. It just saves all commotion. You can do what you're doing and go back to your job. You know what I mean? But like, obviously, she wanted to show and be proud of her religion. And obviously, during to their policies, they but were like, "No, you can't that, do that." And she but didn't is like that it. The, is that what it said that she just had it outright, or she had it on? See, for, from oh, my gathering, obviously, yeah, she's had her that. uniform and she's had it. It just says wearing yeah, a crop. around the neck. So no, obviously, neck. it's obviously out. It's obviously out over a uniform. Well, generally, um, stewardesses in that surely they wear quite a revealing uniform anyway. Quite open neck. I can't comment because I've never actually been on an airplane. So this is um, the same. This is from the same case. So she won yes. that in court, basically that discrimination case. Um, sent home without pay wearing a cross necklace. Um, health and safety overrides religion in one case. Yeah. So they would have to prove that it was a health and safety reason why she couldn't have it on rather than any other reason. Rather than it right. being religiously or politically or personally. It had to be based on health and safety to override yeah. it in court. Yeah. Um, so I assume they didn't have enough evidence to show that, you know, it was a health and safety oh. issue. Yeah, yeah. It says obviously that. if she won. But yet, they did not violate any right, did they? That's what it said in the last article. It said that UK did not violate. It states, it states there, the ruling of the European Court of Human Rights will mean private companies will have to reconsider how they treat employees' rights to express their religious beliefs in the workplace. And the court ruled that British Airways requested of Edwida to remove the cross 
uh, amounted to an interference with her right to manifest her religion. Yeah, there you go. And, also, and it's not like she was, you know, it's not like, you know, no offense to anyone, does it? It's not like she was preaching to anyone. She was no. just displaying the cross that she wears for the religion that she represents and, you know, that's her way of life. So they're impeding on her right, I believe, to just, well, just do her job, essentially, because that's I haven't of, seen anywhere where it said it offended anyone. Right? No. no. But I'll, I'll give you a similar situation, right? You, you said to cover something. I have a title. I have a religious title on my arm. It's not religious because I'm not religious. I just I just like the symbol and what it represents. So I've got on my arm by there. I have the yin yang symbol. When I used yeah. to work at the hotel, I had to cover it in case it, I offended anybody. But I had to wear a long shirt anyway, and it wasn't wasn't like I used to pull my shirt. But they used to say to me, "Don't show that tattoo just in case it's offensive to anyone." So. I can understand from a, um, of a perspective, but I've never offended anybody with the tattoo. If anything, it's just sparked a conversation of people saying to me, oh, are you religious? Yeah. Um, there was a second case study in this one as well, which I think yeah. I think that one uh, as well. So, um, Mr. Mac Farlane and yeah. Ladilly, Riddell, probably sanity, um, invo involved employees who would not carry out part of their job due to the conviction that they had to do so would be contrary to the requirements of their Christian faith, which they believe meant that they could not condone homosexual acts or union. In that case, in, um, in the case of uh, Miss Liddell from 2005, yeah. a public authority employer required her as a registrar to conduct civil partnership registrations for same-sex couples. Miss Liddell's refusal to carry out such registrations and complaints from other staff members ultimately led to her dismissal for failing to comply with the authority's dignity for all policy, which required no, discrimin no discrimination against staff and service users. In this case, Mr. Bauru Bale, his private employer, relate um, relate dismissed him knowing that he believed that homosexual activities were a sin, and considering that this was impacting on the willingness to carry out his job in line with the equal opportunity policies by providing psychosexual counselling to same-sex couples. Okay, so my comment on that will be. Yeah. He has the right to believe what he wants to believe. I'm not saying it's right. But when you are in the 21st century and now same-sex marital situations can happen, you've got to get with the times or you've got to get out of your profession because you're oppressing people. But if you're not, if you're not, if you can't treat everybody fairly, I see that as oppression. I, I hear that. Um, mm. Firstly, I would always say individual responsibility. If you have such a belief, would you put yourself in a situation where you know that something that, that you don't happen. believe, yeah, will happen there? That like, was my point. Yeah, that's what exactly. I wouldn't. Uh, if I was a priest, I or, if I was a priest, then I wouldn't go to a church like Church of England where they would do same-sex marriages. I would go to a Catholic church where they wouldn't and be a priest there. So just like with anything in life, like you put yourself in that position, yeah? Don't complain when things happen. You, that was never yeah. what was gonna happen, innit? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the outcome, uh, Liddell refused to officiate uh, civil partnership ceremonies for gay couples as part of her duties. Um, she lost her case. And the uh -huh. guy who basically wouldn't give um sex advice to homosexual couples couples he lost his case as well in... yeah i'm not surprised i'm not surprised he lost his case to be honest yeah i'm not really that surprised yeah so um next article boom 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 uh -huh. a closer look at how religious restrictions have risen around the world um gmg do you want to take point 
Yeah, so over the decade from 2007 to 2017, the government restrictions on religion, law, policy, uh, policies and actions by state officials that restrict religious beliefs and practices increased markedly around the world and social hostilities involving religion, including violence and harassment by private individuals, organizations or groups have also risen since 2007. This year, Pew Research Center began tracking the latest issues. Uh, so, indeed the, uh, indeed, the latest data shows that 52 governments, including some in very populous countries like China, Indonesia and Russia, impose either high or very high levels of restrictions on religion from up to 40 in 2007. And the numbers of countries where people are experiencing the highest level of social hostilities involving religion has risen from 39 to 56 in over the course of these studies. So got some statistics just to the right hand side here. So it says since 2007, increasing numbers of countries have high and very high levels of government restrictions. So as we can see, so 2017, it was 26%. Uh, and then 2000, so it's shown how it's risen. So from 2007, it was 20. And then every year it was what, about two up until, yeah, every year we've risen by two or so countries and then slowly started to rise up. And then social hostility levels sources shows down below. So from 2007, it was about 20%. So that was 39 countries rising all the way up, up until 2017, being 56 countries. So government restrictions in several different ways, laws and policies restricting religious beliefs, such as requiring religious so groups. One Sorry, sorry to cut. If you if you go back to that graph, can you see in two thousand and twelve the ma the jump it took? Yeah, and then it was like a massive drop again. Mm. Yeah, because it went 39, 36, 35, 47, 57, 65, then back to fifty three. I wonder what happened in two thousand twelve. What was there certain laws and policies that were pushed or? I don't know. No, this is social hostility. So this is people just being violent and thinking like hate crime. And well, do you know what could like have that. could have came into play in 2012? There was a lot of people who thought it was going to be the end of the world. That's true. Yeah. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Then the there was a lot of religious. There was a lot of religious types or people who were impeding on religious people and next, you know, about saying about certain things but like the world was going to end and whatever else i don't know maybe that drove a lot of religious hostility when things certain events and things didn't happen and maybe whatnot. right so you want to bang that yeah so government restrictions have risen in several different ways laws and policies restricting religious freedom such as requiring the religious group register in order to operate the government favoritism of religious groups through funding for religious education properties and Clergy for, clergy. Example, clergy, for example, have consistently been the most prevalent type of restriction globally. And in each of five religious tracts in the studies, America, Asia, Pacific, Europe, Middle East, North Africa, and Sub-Saharan Africa, both types of restrictions have been risen. The global average score of each of these categories increased more than 20% between 2007 and 2017. So what do you reckon guys happened in the last, in them 10 years for it to rise by 20%? So this here is the most important part because like I said before, what happened, what policies were passed in that time, but I know you said this is the yeah. end of the world, but realistically, government will push things through. Like for instance, yeah, they'll give more funding to say for instance, I don't know, Church of England, than a Sikh temple because mm. they will feel that Church of England is going to be more in favour of their ruling than a Sikh temple would be. So that basically starts conflict between the two people because of the fact that, you know, why is their favouritism, why isn't they not? So it's very clear to see that, you know, policies and is very important in, in this kind of movement when it comes to religion, man. Hmm. No, no, I hear that. I second that. Um, funding, I mean, that's one of the key things because all faith is trying to spread the, the, the word. So they need 
certain fundings and obviously education, which is important, you know, mm. property and clergy. Anyways, levels of the government limits on religious activities and government harassment of religious groups and some somewhat lower, but they have also been rising over the past decade and in some cases even more steeply. For instance, the average score of government limits on religious activities in Europe, including effortless to restrict, uh, I can't even read that word, and male Prozy and tantalizing. So can anyone, uh, could anyone oh. go down? Because I don't obviously I don't want male circumcision and double and has doubled since 2007 and the average score of government harassment in Middle East North Africa regions such as criminal prosecution and almonds of other minorities sects of Islam have increased by 72 mm. percent. Just just for the people that we're finding out thinking yeah. To attempt to convert someone to one's own religious faith, to attempt to persuade someone to join one's own political party, to espouse. Basically, it means coercion. Pro zealotize. Freedom of religion, freedom of thought, and freedom of belief is very important, guys. So uh, let's go and do our due diligence and make sure that we look at these things, especially in a period that we're at now, where a lot of the freedoms are seems to be getting taken away through this whole um, movement. Obviously, make sure to do your own research, as you said, you know, look into everything. Um, these policies are going to change. Um, if you want to obviously look at the websites that we've looked at today to do research, then please do so. And just to remember that, um, you know, everyone has the right to believe in what they believe in as long as it doesn't impede any sort of harm onto anyone else. And at the end of the day, be proud of what you are and what you and what you believe in. Hey, listen, I, I second both of them. The, the one thing I would actually say is when you're doing your research, make sure you also do your research to understand what you're looking at. You yeah. know what I mean? Make sure that when, when you see something, you're thinking, huh, you know what I mean? Just, just go and take a look at something that make you understand it, that breaks it down for you, innit? Because yeah. the better you understand it, the better view you have on it. Of course. Yeah, boy. So make sure you press that subscribe button. Make sure you like the thing and share the thing. Big up yourself Turn every on. time. Thank you again. Big up. Jeez. We appreciate your time today, guys. Thank you very much. And we'll catch you in the next episode. This has been Out of the Box. All right, people then. Uh, I'm I'm sad it's another episode done, but we'll be back. So I'll see you soon. Yeah, boy!